Hey everyone, it's Dave from Dave's Ohio Barbecue. Making bacon. Uh, is it worth it? How good does it taste? We're going to find out today. Stick around. So ever since I got my pellet smoker, I've been wanting to try home curing some pork belly to make bacon. Um, the reason I wanted to do it on the pellet smoker is because it's much easier to keep it at a low temperature um, for a prolonged period of time. I don't have to worry about any heat spikes so much as I do with my offset or with my Weber Smoky Mountain. Um, so what I did, I started off by buying an eight pound pork belly from Costco. It was actually eight and some change. Um, and then the first thing you want to do with it is you want to trim it up. I just like squaring up the corners and getting any big flaps of fat off there, things like that. By the time I was done trimming stuff off, it was probably, you know, closer to seven pounds, maybe seven pounds plus. So before this recipe, I did a lot of researching online, but uh, what I ended up using was I have a good friend who I've known since kindergarten, Julian Shapiro. He is um, a butcher, a chef, or whatever you want to call him. He, he works at, uh, I think it's called Eight Hands Farm uh, out in South Hold, Long Island, where they raise pigs and they have a butcher shop, all sorts of stuff. He's the one that gave me this um, basic recipe. I changed it from what he gave me, but he, he taught me the process. So Julian, thank you. Uh, I would say we're even now because back in elementary school during field day, I carried your ass in all those three-legged races. So uh, I think we're good, right? Right? Yeah, I'd say we're good. There are two ways you can really cure bacon. Well, two ways using a salt cure you can cure bacon. You can do a dry cure, which is where you dump dry ingredients on it and you kind of flip it every day and kind of let all the water kind of draw out of the bacon. And then there's also this sort of um, submerged or wet curing method where you actually have uh, the bacon sitting in the cure liquid and then that kind of goes through the meat, you know, with osmosis, basically. It's looking for that equilibrium. For our recipe today, we're gonna to be using the wet, the water method. Benefit of the water method is you don't really lose that much weight on the bacon. When you use the, just the dry ingredients on top, all the water falls out and you can lose up to about a third of the weight of your pork belly. This way it stays the same weight as what you started out with. Here's my ingredients. Now these are by weight because it's a little bit easier to measure things out using a kitchen scale. If you don't have a kitchen scale, um, you can go find another recipe online that uses, you know, volume numbers, but I'm using weight numbers here. We start out with 200 grams of just regular salt, 10 grams of that pink curing salt, hundred grams of whatever sweetener it is you want to use. A lot of people just use dark brown sugar. Um, some people will use honey. I actually went for maple syrup that I made uh, from the maple trees on my property. I want to keep this as, you know, wholesome as I can. Um, and then I wanted to add a little bit more of a, I don't know, breakfasty flavor to it. So I ended up putting in two teaspoons of allspice and then I chucked a cinnamon stick in there as well. Um, I added all that to a pot and then on top of it, I dumped two liters of water. Um, it's not gonna end up being two liters of water when I'm done, it's gonna be four liters. But I started out with two, put the pot on the stove, yeah, I brought it up to a boil and then I simmered it for about 10 minutes. That way the cinnamon stick and the allspice release all their flavor and then the salt and the sugar, you know, they all dissolve into the water mixture. Now I can't go use this right now because it's boiling hot. I'm gonna add another two liters of water, but this time I'm gonna add two liters of ice water to this, and that will cool it down to a nice room temperature so that I can use it to put on top of my uh, pork belly. So to give this pork belly a little bit of a jump start, because I could honestly, I could just put this in a, in a you know, container, pour the brine over it and let it sit for 14 days and we'd be good, but I want a little quicker than 14 days. So I'm gonna take my, um, my barbecue hypodermic needle thingy here I've got, and I'm going to inject the pork belly with this cure solution all over it, you know, both sides, get as much of it in there as I can. Then I'm going to put it in the container and then I'm going to pour the rest of the um, cure solution on there. I actually made more cure solution than I needed for this size pork belly, but better safe than sorry. Having it injected and having it sitting in that uh, cure, it's going to reach that equilibrium a lot quicker 
than just pouring water on it because it doesn't have to travel all the way into the middle. It's kind of giving it a jump start. I sealed the container. I put a bowl on top of the pork belly to make sure it was kind of pushed down into the cure so it's not floating there. And then I put it in the fridge, lid sealed for five days. Halfway through those five days, I took it out and flipped it just to be safe. You probably don't need to do that, but I figured why not? After the five days are up, I took it out, rinsed it off, and I put it onto a wire rack on a uh, cookie sheet um, and then back into the fridge. The reason I did that is there's a couple schools of thought. Some people think smoke sticks better to a pork belly that's wet. Some say it sticks better to a pork belly that's dry. I'm going to dry it out for about 24 hours so it'll be tacky. It'll be halfway between wet and dry. That way I'll get the best of both worlds is my theory. Now to smoke this pork belly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto my uh, Louisiana Grills pellet smoker. It's probably going to take two or three hours to smoke this pork belly. What I'm looking for is an internal temperature of about 150 degrees on the pork belly. You're really not looking to like barbecue this or cook it. I mean, you're cooking it, but you're not looking to like roast it to, a, you know, to nothingness. You're just looking to get it kind of lightly cooked through so that it's good enough for, you know, sealing up and saving. I start by setting my pellet smoker to a higher temperature. That way everything gets lit on, lit up and it starts burning and everything. And then once everything's up to temperature, I'm going to turn it down to 180. That's the lowest temperature the grill goes to. I'm going to open up the door, let it kind of get back down to temperature. I'm going to put my pork belly on there. So the pork belly goes onto the smoker. I'm going to take this thermometer probe, this meat probe that my uh, pellet grill has, and uh, stick it in there and set it to 150 degrees as a set point. And it's going to be two, three hours before it gets to that 150 internal temperature that I'm looking for. Once it's done, I'm going to take the pork belly. Well, it's bacon now. I'm going to wrap it up in some saran wrap, put it in a container, put it back in the fridge overnight just to get it to cool down. Now, if you don't have a slicer, um, you can just use your knife and try to cut nice, thin, even slices of this, you know, and, and that's fine. I have a friend who uh, has this really nice industrial slicer that he let me borrow. So I'm going to use that for slicing up my bacon. Um, going to get it, you know, relatively thick. I don't want little thin, paper thin pieces of bacon. I want, you know, decent sized bacon. And I'm going to be cutting it up and I'm gonna use my vacuum sealer here. I'm gonna put it in, suck all the air out, and just freeze all these. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, just chuck it in a bag, it'll freeze. Um, or you can keep it in the fridge for, you know, up to a week. Again, seven pounds of bacon in a week is probably a lot. Maybe. I'd eat it. And just for a little taste test, I'm gonna grill some up here on my Blackstone. Yeah. Right off the bat, I can say, it smells amazing. It has such a, I don't know, just not a more pork flavor, but a more smell like a just something more natural, like a bacon, just really strong bacon smell. It really smells good. I'm excited. There also seems to be considerably more meat on this bacon. Um, a lot of store-bought bacon that I find has like 50% fat, 50, you know, a lot more of that white fat running through it. This seems to be more like actual meat, just a little bit of fat running through it. My griddle is uh, sticking a little bit because if you saw in one of my previous videos, I'll put a link to it up top here, um, I basically blasted the surface of it down back to bare metal. I haven't had time to really re-season it. So it's sticking a little bit, but this will be part of the re-seasoning process. All right, so now for the taste test, take a bite out of this bad boy. Hmm. Nice and crispy. Really, really good bacon flavor. Just tastes like mm, bacon. Now, remember from the recipe, I didn't put too much stuff in it. Just kind of a little bit of sweetness and just a touch of spice, but nothing crazy. Um, this tastes like just great, great bacon. I mean, you should try some of this. It's delicious. So here's the big question that I have about this. Is it worth it? Is it worth curing and smoking your own bacon? Well, I can tell you this. It tastes so good. It tastes better than any bacon you've bought in the store probably ever. I mean, this is equivalent of like super high-end cured bacon that you would get from like a independent butcher or maybe, you know, the, the best, best, best brand that they have at your supermarket, maybe. Um, so is it worth it? Well, the pork belly itself cost about $25 uh, for the eight point something pound package. 
And then the only other thing I had to purchase was the pink salt, which was about $5. To be honest, I'm going to be using this container of pink salt for the foreseeable future. So the whole $5 should not count in this equation, but I'm going to do it anyway. So that's 30 bucks. If you divide that by the seven pounds of bacon that I got out of this pork belly, it comes to be roughly $4.20 a pound. That's not bad considering, you know, good bacon will run you four to six dollars a pound. Um, average bacon, you know, is cheaper than that. Now, where you can really probably save money, since this is a kind of labor intensive and time intensive process, is if you could cure maybe three of these pork bellies at a time, you know, 20 pounds of bacon. Um, if you have a spare fridge out in the garage, you know, that you keep beer in or something like that, somewhere where you can hold that much meat, um, and then smoke them all together and cut them up and seal them all together, then that would really kind of be um, beneficial cost-wise because you'd get you know a year's worth of bacon in, in one shot and you'd be good to go. So the next time I do that, that's definitely what I'm gonna do. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell so you get notifications. I always have new videos coming out. Um, so this way you'll get notifications when I post them. Also make sure you follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Dave's Ohio Barbecue. Um, and tell a friend about my channel. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I I'd be more than happy. I'm working on a video right now that's from a question from a viewer. So leave the questions down below and maybe I can answer them for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>